It's March, uh, it's March 14th. Got another sprinkle of snow last night. Seems like every couple of days we got a sprinkle of snow. Uh, it's minus 17 Celsius, feels like minus 19. Uh, cold warnings in the, in effect here. Uh, no signs of winter breaking. Uh, if you had a snowmobile this year, it's a, it's a good year for snow, man. There's some years we've hardly got enough snow to even go in this area. Now look, there's the old, uh, that's, yeah, that's, it looks like a snowmobile, but it's actually just like a, like an ornament or like a, like a, a paperweight. Yeah. <laughs> All right, just getting ready to get things going here for Saskatchewan. When you come into the shop yard here, and of course they never plowed the driveway. <laughs> I got off the side of the driveway, came in, <laughs> and uh, wow, that's uh, okay. <laughs> Well, that suck. I dug all around it, underneath it, tried shoving steel underneath the wheels for traction. And luckily, two good Samaritans came by and gave me a tow and got me out of there, so yeah. I'm just here to grab my extra welding cables because I don't know what kind of situation I'm going to be up again. So that's the thing when you get thrown out of job and uh, you don't know what you're doing, it's you got to like overpack so much stuff. But while I'm here, there's the Ultra. So that's stock motor mount hole, stock motor mount hole. This is an aftermarket mount. It's a bit different than this one, but similar-ish. Uh, there's a after, or that. There's a stock hole. There's all this wax stuff. So I think that is the stock hole. He had it. It was all crooked, and he didn't have the. Uh, he had that bushing just not even in there, and then it was all jam wanked. So I'm gonna cut a piece of flapper that butts up, that goes underneath. The butts up to that in there and drill a hole in line with this and then I got some longer bolts so I should be able to get that sorted out not too not too hard there's the motor I had to yeah I got this top off got this resealed uh, pardon the heater but uh, and I changed the head the head was pretty pitted uh, from when the cylinder when it blew up so I took it back apart I got a head from the parts guy so new head reseal that three new pistons I got three new pistons in got all the water pump stuff all back together took all this apart and cleaned it inspected it all it's got a nice set of two-stage power reeds in it uh, I got a pull cord rope I'm gonna change a pull cord so the motors the motors buttoned up good to go um, and then th this the rest of the sled is kind of a whole big it's not just a normal sled rebuild. It's kind of a big project. It's a whole, it's a whole big thing. So I'm getting kind of sick of it, but I just got to get it cleared out of here because I got to get this back into a welding shop. So yeah, I'm just here grabbing my cables and end up being a whole big getting stuck ordeal. Remember the other day how I was like, oh, I think one of those holes in the cinder might be crossed. I don't know they're not in there good, but ah, it's cold out. Screw it. Well, yeah, it uh, it wasn't it wasn't good. I gassed rough a while ago and it was just pouring out like a river. So I. I screwed up on it. I just put a, a washer underneath it there, a couple of washers underneath it, and cranked it up. And uh, so, yeah, there was a good amount of fuel spillage. See, the fuel filler is there. Where's my hand? The fuel filler is there, and there's like a, it's like a big fat filler neck that's part of the tank that comes in. So, like, the fuel center down there, for that to leak down to that level, that's like a lot of fuel. But it didn't, it didn't leak that much. I was only at the gas station just down the road there, but I think I got her stopped now. <laughs> I don't know if this pertains to me, but this dealy bolted in brackety dealy. Look, it's a it's a fuel weld. Uh, it's a six mil weld on both sides. So that means error side and other side. So the whoop, there's two verts, that vert and the one on the back side. It's a six mil weld on each side. So that's a uh, maybe maybe that's for me. So what I'm thinking is they're called lower panels, lower brick panels or something. So I'm thinking that every one of these intersections um, there's a six mil weld that goes up each side. Boop, 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 boop. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, apparently there's 80 panels or uh, like 100 meters of this stuff all tacked up ready to go. So I think I think that's what I'm up against. I think it's a six mil weld. Bam, 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 bam. But it's all galvanized. You gotta ground the galvanized first. And it's all like right scalp. So that was then pre-grind. So it's 
galvanize on top of galvanize. Like, it's just going to be a disaster. But, okay. So, this is literally my map. Um, yeah, it's got some pin scratches. It's like, roof. It says, I don't know, like red roof gospel church something. And you get a little blue pin line. And it goes down to... Yep. So it's right on the border, I guess. Um, yeah, so that was hard. So there's the building. Sorry about the weird background music. It's not. It's the neighbors. They're always cranking beats. Anyways, so she's quite the building. Yep, there it is. Can't print off prints. The old cartridge finally ran out. It's been running out for like a long time now, but... So, whew, this thing lasts me years. Now I gotta go see if I can buy one of these dirty old units, if they still exist. So I guess after supper I'm on a ink cartridge mission, of course. And of course, around to the store, and the only store open at this hour uh, doesn't carry the uh, the brand of uh, ink cartridge I need. So that's it. I give up. I'm. I don't. Here you go. Next stop, Saskatchewan. Um, yeah, I'll take off uh, sometime tomorrow afternoon. See ya in Saskatchewan. Holy moly, we probably can't see nothing here in the camera at night, but uh, I found the site. Uh, anyways, there's the site. She's way out. She's way out there, boys. I uh, ah, gotta find a hotel now. Minus 26 Celsius, holy crap, man. Sorry, minus 19 and left the hotel room. This job is friggin' relentless. Holy damn. Oh, well, it's Wednesday morning, so not even halfway done this friggin'. Minus 26. Wow. Okay, well. Whew. Another section like this one, in there that I did, but you can't see it because it's all hoarded in now. So this is pretty much the job. We're all done this stuff. No, so we're just uh, about four and a half days. And <laughs> I'll add it up after, but like. I don't know how much, a hundred and some pounds of rod. Forty pounds of rod probably. Pass after pass. Stretch missing here because of the dirt. But I don't gotta go around the whole building, but you get the point. <laughs> Just whoop. What this is is called a brick, a brick angle. So it's just a foundation and they're gonna put a brick block wall on this so far up. So that's, that's just a platform for the block wall to set. It's quite the building. Native schools, there's a big teepee going in there. See, it's all around the whole thing. Everywhere. have all of it up yet there's more to do but I don't think I'm gonna be doing it and that's the last stretch there I'll do tomorrow Beep. that's that's the extent of my job
Yeah, that's right. I do what I want. <laughs> Whew, and that's a wrap. Where are we here? The uh, sun's shining. It's a beautiful day out. And after this place, I am out of here. It's cold and I don't want to be here anymore. Whoop. It's the last stretch. All right, wrap up, take my progress pictures, phone the boss guy and get the heck out of here. <laughs> Oh, it's crazy, man. It's this is the most cold I've experienced all winter. Cause we had a real cold snap in Alberta, but I was back east when that happened. And then when the cold snap happened back east, I was back out in Alberta. So I adverted all the cold weather this winter and didn't think I'd see any. But man, this job there are some nice days, but there's some days holy crap. Like it was minus 22 this morning. It's minus 17 right now. Uh, the other day it was minus 26. And there was some days it was warmer, but that wind was blowing, and oh man, it's working down on your knees like that on the ground against the snow. Not fun, but whatever. But then, like in the evenings, a lot of evenings, like the, the minus 26 day, in the evening it was uh, plus one, I think. Like I get, it slowly warms up all day, and then it's warm in the evening, and it's great cold again at night. So that day went from minus 26 to plus one just in the day. Uh, today I think it's supposed to go up to minus 6 or something at the end of the day and it started off at minus 22. Like this wild. Crazy. Uh, I used to live like this kind of region just I don't know maybe two hours from here or something out in this kind of area on the Alberta side. And it's kind of that rolling hills prairie land but this area it's just cold. It's just a dead cold. Like it's, whew, it's just bone chilling so yeah, I got the job done. Uh, I was a lot five to six days to do it. I smashed it out in four and a half. It was a pretty, pretty hard push given the weather and stuff. But uh, I didn't want to stay here any longer than I had to. Uh, if the weather was nicer, I could have pushed it out in four days probably. But so just gotta finish up my last documentation here, and hopefully they tell me I can get out of here. If they don't tell me I can get out of here, well, I'm still getting out of here. <laughs> Talk to you later, guys. Another happy customer. You want things to go right? You call old Uncle Curtis every time. Oof. It's a good day to uh, be leaving this place. 